Now, let me make a disclaimer. I am not talking about racial when I'm talking about mixed marriage. Mixed marriage. I'm not talking about can a can a American marry an Ethiopian, can a Englishman marry a Japanese. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a Christian. And we have today that I read a remarkable biblical truth on shall a godly person marry an ungodly person? Shall a Christian marry a non-Christian? And this is a biblical fact. You can't say this is my interpretation. Because 2 Corinthians, as you see on the screen, written by Paul to Christians, Corinth was the most ungodly group of people ever to receive a letter by Paul. America being the first ungodly nation. If Paul was around today, there would be a epistle to America. And it would be much stronger than the Corinthian church. It re would rebuke the churches and their activities. But 2 Corinthians 6.14, if you're in a Bible-believing church, you have heard this scripture. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteous, what communion has light with darkness. A believer ought not to marry, to date, to engage themselves to an unbeliever. A Christian Corinthian church, Corinthian epistle, shall not be brought to a Catholic, a Jehovah Witness, an atheist, a church of God, a Methodist, a New Ager, a Christian, according to the scriptures, you do not date you do not engage. You do not marry an unbeliever. Never mind. I'm not talking about fornication. I'm not talking about adultery. You don't get involved. In That's another sin. But I'm talking about for the dating of the purpose, you date, then you get engaged, and you marry. As a Christian, well, you're picking on the Catholics, you're picking on the Jehovah Witnesses, you're picking on the Mormons. I'm talking about, first of all, unsaved religion, an atheist. Okay, let's say you're a Christian and you meet a Christian born-again believer in the Jehovah Witness. They are not in a Bible King James Baptist church. You have no business to be with them. You are involved in a, a, a saved Catholic who goes to the Catholic Church, takes part in the Catholic rituals, traditions. You have no business to be with them. You find a, a, a Christian, born-again Christian, who does not attend church, who does not take part in an assembly of group of like believers. You have no business to be with them. You are a King James Bible-believing Christian, and you find someone who is NIV, New King James, and they won't come out of that. They won't come to a King James Bible. You have no business to be with them. That's a Bible command written by Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, but what fellowship have you with righteous, saved Christian? With unrighteous, they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They're not saved. They don't have the right Bible. They don't attend the right church or assembly. Or they don't go at all. What communion have light, Christian, with darkness, evil, wickedness, Satan, the devil? 
Now, can I take a side note? Can I take a bunny trail for a moment? Can we get off marriage for a moment? Can we look at the Christian church? Fellowship with righteous unrighteousness. How about the church that we're going to have a fellowship after church? We're going to have a fellowship Saturday. Invite your unsaved friends. Fight your unsaved family. That is forbidden by Scripture. All are welcome. What are you doing inviting, having fellowship with unrighteous, with darkness in your church? Now, I'm not talking about a building. I'm talking about a group of Christians getting together with the righteous and unrighteous. And if your church takes part in having fellowship, have yoke have communion with the world and the unsaved, how are you going to teach a proper, biblical, Christian, saved marriage when you as a church who is a body of believers, you're saved and you violate the scripture yourself with your fellowship, with all our welcome, invite those that are out well, you know, I, I know somebody, I'm in love with somebody, and they only come to church on Easter and only on Christmas. You know, the Roman Catholic right? Don't be yoked with them. A yoke is, is a wooden instrument that attaches two oxen, two horses, together to work together. Whether you're plowing a field or, or moving a carriage for people or a wagon, you're working together. The law says you're not to have an unequal yoke with it with an oxen and an ass. If your church fellowships and invites and yoke with unbelievers, invite them to church. And you have a fellowship with chicken and pot roast and potato salad and, and beans and, and chili with unrighteous. And you associate yourself with all our welcome with darkness. You violated the scripture too. And the bunny trail. Let's get back to marriage. I said it. That's what the scripture is. You be mad at God. Don't be mad at me. That's what the Bible says. Because when we're talking about Christians, whether he's going to date somebody, we're also talking about the church, which is Christians, not a building, a group of people, whether they're going to fellowship and who they're going to fellowship with. You say, what's wrong with going to the ball game? Are there unrighteous there? Is there darkness there? Is there unbelievers there? You know, I got to go to work and there's unbelievers there. We're not talking about work. We're not talking about where the Bible says you ought to work. No, where in the Bible says you ought to go to the ball game. There are Christians out there that fellowship more with the world than they do with other Christians. There are pastors out there that don't even know where their congregation lives. But. Be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness and unrighteousness, and what communion has light and darkness? What concord with Christ and Belial? Belial is wickedness, wicked. What part has a believer with an infidel? Okay. So Paul puts forth, and he talked about marriage in 1 Corinthians 7. He puts forth in 2 Corinthians, the second letter, follow-up. After already telling the Corinthian church in chapter 7 of, of 1 Corinthians about marriage, he says, you do not marry, you do not date, you do not engage yourself with an unbeliever, with unrighteousness, with darkness, with Belial, with an infidel. Well, they'll get no, no, they will not. Because you don't even do, you don't even be, you don't even start a relationship of dating, then courting. 
I can't think of the word. Uh, engage, then marriage. A dis, an unbeliever, unrighteous, a darkness, a belial. You don't even start. That's the wrong path. That's the wrong path. The moment you find out they're, they're not saved, that's it. You're done. We're friends. We're co-workers. That's it. Don't even go any further. Don't even start any further. Don't, 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 don't. It's biblical. Now, and okay, there are exceptions to the rule. I can think of one right now. And there are probably a few others of a husband and wife. Okay? There are exceptions to the rule. But usually there are very few exceptions to the many destroyed lives. And you got to think about, all right, if you start dating, then you get engaged, and then you get married, there's confusion when it comes to your children. You marry an unbeliever, unrighteous, darkness, Belial, infidel, and they don't ever get, get saved. They don't ever believe what you believe in the King James Bible. They don't yoke with your fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you've got children living under a roof of unequally yoked parents of a believer and an unbeliever with righteous and unrighteous, light and darkness, Christ with Belial in the, this, under the same roof with children or a child. You have set forth confusion and God's not the author of confusion. And those children turn out wrong and they don't get saved. You, as a parent, began those children in unbelief by not obeying the scriptures. And you can't teach them later on, well, you need to find the right person. You didn't, Mom. You need to marry a Christian. You didn't, Dad. I know a woman who, who married a guy... And he, he and long, long short of the run is he pretended to be a Christian to, to marry this woman. And later on, she found out he's not a Christian or wasn't a Christian or wasn't a good Christian. He put on an act. He put on the show. You better be sure. You better be assured. You better know of knowledge that that person that you are planning to date, you are planning to, to engage yourself, you are planning to be husband and wife, you better be assured of their walk, of their talk, of their conduct, and of their life of in Christ, out of Christ. And don't think you're going to change them after you say, I do. Because that's not going to work. The lowest common denominator. It'll get worse rather than get better. So we have in the scriptures, believe it or not, you take your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 11. We have it, a great thing. And before we go there, notice how it says. I want to go back. Unequally yoked. Now, it does not say Christian. But to the church of Corinth, they're Christians. And it leaves such a great possibility to run to First Corinthians and uh, First Kings eleven. Of the story, real story, not make believe, not a tale, but the story of Solomon. 
Let's read about Solomon who unequally yokes himself with unbelievers of Jehovah God. Solomon is not a Christian, but he is a godly man chosen by God, the son of David, and he violates what God tells him not to do. As many Christians do today, as many believers do today, God says, do not marry them. Solomon, do not marry them. And this is what happens when you disobey God. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Strange means they were not Jewish. They were outside the Lord God, Jehovah. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Well, there's number one. God says you weren't to have anything to do with Egypt and the world. Egypt pictures the world. Women of the Moabites, they were excluded by the law. The Ammonites, they were excluded by the law. The Edomites, they were an enemy of Israel, being the, the you know the the brother of Jacob. Zidonians, Gentiles, which is forbidden for the Jews, and the Hittites, which was forbidden of the Jews. As a Christian, you are forbidden. To marry, to associate yourself with an unbeliever. Now, okay, I'm a white American. You may be a white American or European. And you say, listen, I found a King James Bible-believing Oriental woman, an African woman, an Italian woman, a, a Russian woman. An English woman, a Mexican woman. I found somebody. Who said, I ain't talking about that. I ain't talking about race and color. I'm not setting those grounds. I'm talking about an unbeliever coming to an unbeliever. Can a person marry in between different races and God be approved? I'm going to say this. Whatever race you are, whatever race the, the person of the opposite sex, you need to say opposite sex, you're a race, she's a different race, he's a different race, you're of a color, they are a different color, can you marry? Are you saved? Yes, I'm saved. Are they saved? Yes, they are saved. Do they believe the King James Bible? Do, do they believe the King James Bible? Do they believe in a light church that where... If you're the man and you marry her, she will come to your church and serve the Lord. Or maybe you like her church and you'll go serve her. Can you have that? Okay, there's a possibility for marriage. But you have a Christian and you have somebody outside the Christian life not following Christ. Even a worldly, carnal Christian. No, don't marry him. I even go far as, you know, they NIV, New King James, all that. Your King James? No, don't marry him. You serve the Lord, they don't serve the Lord. No. Don't marry him. You're white, and you fall in love with, with a saved King James Bible-believing Jewish woman. You can serve the Lord Jesus Christ together. Please the Lord Jesus Christ in fellowship. Mary. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel. Okay, we're looking at Israel here. We're not, there is no church. There's no Christian. But we can look at the result of a mixed marriage in Solomon in the Old Testament to a Christian in the New Testament, though the passage that we read by Paul does not just state Christian. It says believer and unbeliever. Solomon was a believer. I'm sorry to say he'd be become a 
unbeliever. Of the nations concerned, the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go unto them. Paul says, you shall not go unto the unbelievers. Neither shall they come unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon cleaved unto them in love. Well, I love them. We got true love. Well, sometimes love can drive you in the wrong direction. Uh, I'll move on. He had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other God. So his wives had small G-O-D-S. Solomon had Jehovah, capital G-O-D. He marries outside the Jewish people. He marries outside of women who have nothing to do with Jehovah. You are a born-again Christian of Jesus Christ. And you come in love and marriage with someone who has nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. They got the Pope. They got Moroni. They got their 144,000. They got you can't eat me and we serve on Saturdays. We've got crystal angelic beings. We've got a cabillion amount of gods ourselves. But we don't have Jesus. You do, they don't. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God. They will turn you away from Jesus. They will take the fire that you have for Jesus and extinguish it or turn it down low. As was the heart of David, his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of Zidon. So Solomon, who had Jehovah, married in love, unbelievers of Jehovah, And then he went for against Jehovah for Astrid. You might please your spouse. Okay, I'll go to I'll go to church with you on Easter and, and Christmas of the Catholic Church. I'll come to one of your whatever you call assemblies or, or congregation of the Jehovah Witnesses. I'll come to one of your events of the LDS. Malcolm, another god, the abomination of the Emirates. See, Solomon became yoked with unbelievers where the Apostle Paul tells the Christian, don't be unequally yoked, as Solomon has. Solomon turned to the gods against Jehovah. And Paul is warning that you may turn against Jesus to the gods of the heathen. Now, I'm telling you right now, the Baptist church has fallen for the world and has turned to the gods of Easter and Christmas. And they even go so far as to say and try to make it a Jesus holy day. In reality, 
And in fact, that what the church and what the Christian has done is become unequally yoked to the Catholic Church and goes after the gods, goddesses of Esther, Easter, and has gone after the god of Tammuz. And the church is ignorant of what is happening. And the pastors close their eyes and won't tell the truth. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as David his father. Now Solomon had set out that we read from the time that David gave Solomon the throne, we read the zeal, the zeal. We read how he would go off, he would offer sacrifice, he would go off and pray. He had been met by God, I believe, at, it was two times, maybe three times, that God spoke to Solomon. A zeal that he builds the temple of perfection as he could be in perfection. That could be your life, Christian. You have a great zeal. You are witnessing. You are reading your Bible. You are praying. You are attending church faithfully. You are in prayer of studying your Bible. You are trying to help Christians grow. You have a great zeal for the Lord, and then you fall in love. And Start dating unequally yoked with an unbeliever, as um, you have come from the light and you turn to the darkness because you love him. That's sad. I'm not saying you're not saved. I don't say I'm not saying you can lose your salvation. The psalm is going to be in heaven. But your fellowship with Jesus has been hampered because you love an unbeliever. Look at Solomon. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as David his father. Solomon had. Solomon had the zeal. Christians have the zeal until they fall in love with an unbeliever. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemus. The abominations among. This is the man that built the first temple for Jehovah. Gold, cherubim. That his father paid the price for the property. Solomon gathered the riches. Solomon gathered the workmen. Solomon built with all zeal the temple of Jehovah. He gets involved with unbelieving women. That his law, the law of Moses said, no, don't get involved. Don't marry. Now he's building temples for God. The Christian has a zeal. He's witnessing. He's reading his Bible. Paul says, no. to being yoked with an unbeliever, a lost person. As he grows old, he's not in church no more. The Bible's closed. 
and the Lord's anger with him. He, in the hill that was before Jerusalem and for Molech, So where his fellowship, where his temple is, not far from Jesus, he's serving Chemish, he's serving Molech. the children of Amos. Molech is the brazen god with the fiery pit of hell in his stomach where they would offer children, babies, to Molech. And you'll read this in the Old Testament where they will burn their babies to Molech. In America, we do that with abortion before the baby's born. In the Catholic Church, when a priest and nun fornicated and it produced a child, that child was killed in the name of Molech, in the name of their Jesus, another Jesus. So Paul says, no fellowship, no being yoked with an unbeliever, an infidel, darkness. And later on in years when you have children, your mind may be close to Jesus. You may be thinking about Jesus, but your heart is not there. And your children playing in your house, watching TV in your house, under with your unsaved spouse. And they're not in Sunday school hearing about Bible stories. They're not in a Bible-believing Baptist church hearing the preaching. Of the King James 1611 Bible. You have sacrificed. Your children. Because you love. That person of the opposite sex. And it comes to be an abomination. When you give in Christian. To the gods. Of your spouse. It's an abomination, Christian. When you have turned your children away from Jesus. Because you loved your unsaved spouse. Likewise, he did for all his strange wives. Now, we're to marry only one. Which burnt incense and sacrifice unto their gods. You know, that unsaved spouse may continue in the worship of gods or no God. They may continue in the worship of evolution or career or the credit card. They may continue in the sports team. The alcohol. The tobacco. Or their club. Or their movie. They may continue in the worship of whatever their God is. But their gods will hinder and put the flame out of Jesus Christ, your God. 
And if you are a white, you are under the subjection. You are to submit and obey your unsaved husband that you love. And if he says, no, you can't go to church. No, you can't take your children to church. No, you can't read your Bible. You married him. Don't go crying, okay, baby. Oh, my husband went me. Uh, you married him. You got a problem. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. And the Lord God and Jesus will be angry with you, Christian. Because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel. Which had appeared unto him twice. Okay, appeared unto Solomon twice. You know, if you are saved, the Lord has appeared unto you at least once at Calvary when you put your faith and trust in him. If you are enlightened by the word of God, the Lord has appeared unto you through the Holy Spirit. If the Lord has empowered your mouth to witness, the Lord has appeared unto you. If the Lord has spoken to you through a message that the preacher is preaching or teaching or the Sunday school teaching, the Lord has appeared unto you. If the Lord has convicted your heart and has caused you to get down and kneel and pray, the Lord has appeared unto you. If the Lord has given you joy in your heart, you're driving to the grocery store, you're driving home, you're driving to work, and you just want to sing out to the Lord, the Lord has appeared unto you. And then you marry that unsaved person. You marry that religious person. And he commanded him concerning the things that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded in order to bring peace and tranquility and relaxation to your house. You may have to give up a little or a lot, Jesus. And it'd be worse so if you are a wife than having to give to a subjection to a husband that's not saved. Think about your children. Wherefore the Lord said in the song, For as much as this is done of thee, Thou has not kept my command, covenant, my statute, which I have commanded thee. Paul wrote to the church. I will, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and give it to thy servant. God may rend, God may rip your family, your house, and your home, and your children. And Paul gave you the warning as Moses gave the warning to Solomon. Look at verse 14. I'm not going to read 12 there because that's, we're not talking about a kingdom. But though, notwithstanding the days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of thy hand, howbeit I will not rend all the kingdom, but will give one tribe unto thy, unto thy son for David my servant's sake, for the Jerusalem's sake, which I have Jesus said, if a kingdom rise against a kingdom, if a house against a house, if Satan rises against Satan, it shall not stand. In the Gospels, Matthew. You may lose in your house.
your spouse. They may go to hell. You may lose your children in your house. They may go to hell. Paul says in chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians that if there were two people, they're both lost and, they, and one of them gets saved. They didn't marry a saved person. They were both lost, and one got saved. And the unsaved one says, listen, I'm not staying with you. I'm going. Goodbye. Paul says, let him go. You're not under bondage. But we're not talking about a saved person. Whereas they married a saved person. We're not talking about two lost people getting married and then one getting saved. We're talking about you are a saved Christian, you marry, you enter into the union with an unsaved person. Paul doesn't even write because it is taken for granted, Christian, you don't marry, you don't date. You don't engage in a lost person. It's taken for granted. And the Lord stirred up, verse 14, an adversary for unto Solomon. Look at verse 23. And God stirred him up another adversary. And in your relationship with Jesus, hampered, hindered by darkness, by infidel, by unbelief, God may bring an adversary, and it may be that person you love. They may not ever get saved. They might be a hindrance. They may be a thorn in your marriage. Because you weren't supposed to marry him. How about another adversary? The in-laws. How about another adversary? Your children. How about another adversary? Your grandchildren. How about another adversary? The Christians you once knew. All because, all because, Christian, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Solomon was a believer. He was right with God under the law. Then he got mixed up with unbelievers. People with other gods and other goddesses. For what fellowship have righteous with unrighteousness? If you're right with God, what are you doing hanging out with someone who's unrighteous with God? They're on not only they're unbelievers, they're not saved, they're not living right. They got the wrong church they got the wrong bible they got the wrong attitude church why are you bringing in the world why are you saying all are welcome why are you sub sub uh, sub why are you putting subject to your church youth and when they're looking for somebody, maybe for companionship, they may be looking for somebody to marry. And when they look in the church, they see more unbelievers, more unrighteous believers, more un unrighteous, more darkness, more belial, more infidel people in your church for them to choose. Because you said all are welcome, 
Invite everybody and anybody to church for Easter. Invite anybody and everybody for this service, to for this this Bible conference, for this revival. Invite everybody, invite your neighbors, everybody, and you are subjecting your youth to unbelievers, unrighteous, darkness, bilio, infidel. What a class of people to introduce your youth. Rather than growing, rebuking, teaching, and preaching Christians to live right, to do right, to be right. You say, what about the unsaved? Jesus said, go into the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say, bring them in. He said, go to them. The churches are filled with unbelievers. They are filled with unrighteousness. They are filled with darkness. They are filled with bilia. They are filled with infidels. And that's the people you are putting your Christian youth to look. And a possibility for them to say, I love them. The church has been so recognized to act and talk and be like the world and subjecting them to the to the youth grouping for the camp meetings for the Sunday school to be like and part of the world and they look at the Christian as weird odd that's not somebody I want to marry So the biggest fault of many choosing the wrong person to marry is the church because the wrong people are in your church. And the biggest fault of all the biggest fault for somebody to have a marriage of saved and unsaved is you violated what God said to Paul through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and you violated the story of Solomon. 